empathy, and understanding. For over 70 years, the fundamental foundation of the interrogation process and the read technique, which is called theme development, has been empathy and understanding. Empathy for the subject situation, understanding the circumstances they were in that caused them to act in this particular manner. The core of the theme presentation, which is a monologue, should focus on the concept that the investigator understands that good people can make mistakes in judgment due to a variety of different circumstances or factors. For the most part, our interrogation themes reinforce the justifications and rationalizations that the subject has already adopted in his own mind to make him feel more comfortable with his behavior. It's very natural for a person who has committed an act of wrongdoing to try to justify it or rationalize it to make it in their mind understandable, acceptable, and maybe even okay. In many instances, the suspect who has committed an act of wrongdoing recognizes that committing the act was wrong, and as a result he feels a sense of guilt, maybe shame, feelings of remorse, anxiety, and to try to deal with this, he tries to justify or rationalize his behavior. So during the theme development, it is appropriate to initially develop what we call a third-person theme, something the subject can associate with without laying the sense of guilt at his doorstep at this early stage, but let him begin to familiarize our understanding of the concept good people can make mistakes in judgment. In this third-person theme, this kind of sets up the foundation for eventually the presentation of a theme centered around the subject's own behavior. But this is designed to get them to think that we understand the circumstance, we know how people can make mistakes in judgment, and the factors that can influence their behavior. Here's an example of a third-person theme, or at least the beginning part of it. Jim, the reason I want to talk with you here today is that you remind me of a fellow we had in here just a couple of weeks ago. He was young, ambitious, what you would call a real go-getter. By working his way up in the bank, he went from clerk to teller, and finally within a year was promoted to be an auditor. Everything seemed to be going well. Uh, everything was going great for him. He had a great family, a couple of kids. Uh, he was in the process of moving into a new home in a very nice part of town. Then one day, in the process of balancing the books, he noticed that a teller had failed to record a $6,000 deposit. And, unfortunately, this was just about the amount of money he needed to make the down payment on his new home. So, on the spur of the moment, he made a decision to take the money. Uh, I don't think I have to tell you what happened next. The bank noticed that the shortage occurred when the customer called and said they never got credit for their deposit, and they began an investigation. And this young auditor, he came under suspicion, and I remember him sitting right in the chair where you are, telling me how sorry he was for making the decision to take the money, how out of character that was for him to do that. And the reason you remind me of him so much is that just like him, you've got a lot going for you. You're intelligent, ambitious, basically, I think, a very honest person. I think what happened is, on the spur of the moment, you decided to do this to maybe help pay some bills, maybe to buy some clothes for your family, maybe maybe to pay some medical bills, and I know you're buying a house that might have been necessary to make that down payment, etc. As this example illustrates, the third person theme should somewhat parallel the subject's present circumstance or motivation. While a story may have a happy ending, i.e. that the subject decided to tell the truth about what they did, the investigator should never imply leniency as a result of the suspect's admission of guilt. For example, it will be completely improper, completely improper for the investigator to say something to the effect, after the fellow told the truth and explained his side of the story, the bank agreed to make the $6,000 out as a loan and to even give him a raise so he could help support his family. Clearly, this statement would be completely inappropriate. The theme can be developed around a number of different concepts. Here are a few. Sympathize with the suspect by saying that anyone else under similar conditions or circumstances might have done the same thing. Reduce the suspect's feeling of guilt by minimizing the moral seriousness of the offense. Suggest a less revolting or more acceptable motivation or reason for the offense than what is known or presumed. 
Sympathize with the suspect by condemning others, for example, an accomplishment for talking him into this situation. The emphasis of the interrogation process and the re-technique is to create an environment that makes it easier for the subject to tell the truth. An essential part of this process is to suggest face-saving excuses for the subject's actions, which include projecting blame away from the subject onto such circumstances or elements as financial pressures, the victim having said or done something that provoked the incident, an accomplice talking him into doing it, high emotions at the time of the event, maybe the influence of alcohol or drugs. There are two types of acceptable minimization that can occur during theme development, minimizing the moral seriousness of the behavior and minimizing the psychological consequences of the behavior. We teach never, however, to minimize the legal consequences of the subject's behavior because that's getting into a promise of leniency, which the courts have consistently ruled that, based on a quid pro quo, can be considered coercive on the part of the investigator. For an additional discussion about developing the theme, you should look at one of our other web tips on the YouTube channel that is called Projection and Rationalization. Combined with empathy and understanding, it will give you a very clear picture of what we try to do during theme development. And in our book, Criminal Interrogation Confessions, we spend a great deal of time detailing each one of our themes as to what might be said to accomplish the objective of making the subject feel it's okay, it's comfortable, I want to tell the truth. Thank you very much for taking a few minutes to view this video presentation.